Welcome to The Big Story, hosted by Victor. The Big Story brings you interviews with inspiring people who are killing it in various spheres of life. Get ready to learn a lot while laughing and having a good time in a relaxed environment. Hello, good afternoon. How are you doing? Yeah, good afternoon, Victor. <laughs> really nice to have you. Yeah, yeah. Same here. Yes. It's a pleasure being here. Nice, nice, nice. How is the, how is the weather there in France? Uh, I mean, we're entering into winter proper, so it's getting cold, but still, still fine for now. The leaves nice. are beautiful, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's really amazing. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to uh, join uh, the big the big story. Yeah. Um, well, when I think about professionals and uh, that have something to say, especially for the youths, upcoming youths, and also for Africans in diaspora, you're one of the names that pops to mind. So it was a no-brainer to invite you. So I really appreciate you honoring the invites. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice. Pleasure being here. And great work you've been doing so far to um, I watched a couple of episodes and I, okay. I think it was quite inspiring to see the great work your team um, you're doing, you know. Okay. Uh, well done. So they're coming. Thank, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. So um, without further ado, let's get this going. Um, would you please give a brief description of yourself, what you do and uh, for the viewers to know? Okay. Um, my name is Abiodun Dominic Odunoga. Okay. Um, um, I, I weigh three caps. Um, that's what I tell people. So um, okay. I'm a development consultant. Okay. And for that, that means I work with um, development institutions such as the United Nations, um, such as Commonwealth, uh, okay. African Development Bank, to do projects that involves maybe poverty reduction. Um, in the past, I've worked on projects around climate change. Um, in, pro um, in general, sustainable development goals, I also consulted with UNESCO a couple of times, um, you know, uh, for the past six years on a regular basis. So that's the first cap I wear, development practitioner. And the other part I also do is um, wear the cap of um, an entrepreneurship consultant, business consultant. So okay. um, with this, in this portfolio, what I do basically is to work with startups and okay. people who also support startups. So mm -hmm. startups themselves, I help them with fundraising. Um, I help them with business development um, activities. So you're trying to get into new markets trying to scale up your existing service. Um, yeah, and then also private sector or institutions will have um, a sort of CSR to support startups, whether through projects, through competitions, through pitch events, hackathons. So I work with um, many of them. I work with incubators both um, in Europe and across Africa. Um, I've also worked with the likes of European Union to develop, to train actually um, entrepreneurs across um, Europe in four countries. Um, and the third cap I wear is diaspora and cap. So in yeah. that, in that um, regards, I work with um, different institutions who, um, who are conscious of the potential of the diaspora. And on that portfolio also, I co-created an organization called Friends of Nigeria Europe. And that's one of like a foremost Nigerian diaspora organization. What we do basically is to unless the Nigerian diaspora to, you know, benefit each other, contribute skills, network together. But more importantly, the organization serves as a bridge to help French and European investors to invest in Nigeria. Um, so on a yearly basis, we promote Nigeria's attractiveness to foreign investors. Um, so those are the two, three, three things I do majorly, uh, entrepreneurship, um, development consulting, and also um, startup enterprise, uh, diaspora too, yeah. Okay, wow, that is a... The three horsemen in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it easy combining all of those into becoming, uh, yeah, into what you are right now? Is it an easy job? Yeah, it is. I mean, it, re it requires the same level of skills, um, which has to do with um, project management, um, business development activities, um, stakeholder management, yeah. a bit of research, networking. So. Most of the skills is just that um, stakeholders that work with are different. When I'm talking to people who are interested in diaspora, uh, yeah. yeah, the total changes because that involves 
the audience is quite, you know, specific Nigerians um, and people want to support um, projects back in Nigeria. So that's as to Nigerians abroad. Um, mm -hmm. But it's almost the same thing when you write to them or you try to get them to be involved in what we do as an organization, you need all of these skills, communication skills. So um, yeah, it's just a different ball game and different tone of communication, but the same skills are, you know, kind of relevant across yeah. all the three yeah. portfolios. Yeah, I guess that's what makes you unique. Having to having been able to get uh, experience from other departments and other facets and translating them into what you have right now. Okay. Indeed. Departments. Yeah. So sometimes uh, when I first heard of international development consultants, I was not quite sure what exactly that meant. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's... <laughs> So uh, could you give a brief description of what what yeah. exactly what exactly you do on a day to day? Because you spoke a bit about uh, startups, entrepreneurship, uh, but I think that's not that's probably on the side, or, or that's not the main job of the international development consultant. Yeah, so, indeed. Yeah. Um, well, I mean that would ex I mean, if you just break it into two, there is the international development part, which most people know what's about. So I will define mm -hmm. it that way. And there's the consultant part. Who is yeah. the consultant? A consultant is somebody who has the skills, he has the expertise, he or she has the expertise to be able to solve problems for external people, clients, individuals. So if you have um, an experience, you have a skill, and you yeah. serve your knowledge to help people overcome their challenges, whether it's a business or a foundation you are a consultant and you can be a consultant to a church. So if a church is saying, we want to grow our membership from 5,000 to 10,000, how do we do it? And you help them with, you know, marketing on social media, rebranding how the pastor preaches, you yeah. help with how the church looks like, how to do follow-up. Yeah. Even though you don't know what you're doing, but if you solve that problem and they achieve that goal, you just consulted for your church. Okay, That's so true. people, I try to de-emphasize. So when you're a consultant, people be like, ah, it's for wizards and you no know, <laughs> you know, it's just that do you have can you offer people a knowledge um or an expertise that helps them overcome that ch challenge if you do that yeah. for a family friend for an uncle and auntie you are a consultant whether you're being paid or not that's another different board game mm -hmm. so then international development um i mean from what it stands development that has to do with um cross border i mean so that means you're talking about from country to country it's not mm -hmm. one country because it's international. It involves multi nations, multinational. And so, what does that imply? It means things that affect the world. So, when it comes to development on a broad level, the whole world is concerned about trade. So, that means Chinese people are wondering how can they improve their trade with the Netherlands, um, Dutch, or uh, the French people are involved. Okay, how can we expand our territory and, in, I mean, gain more economic prowess with working with Anglophone Africa? Nigeria, yeah. Rwanda, that's true. There's another part that has to do with environmental protection. The whole world is concerned with climate change. Even though you're not concerned, whatever you know, the likes of the Chinese or the US companies do in terms of glass, uh, gas flaring, everything still comes over to affect the entire world with respect to the fact that ices are melting at the Arctic. And because ices melt, you have flooding in some other parts of the world, even while yeah. not the ones. So, Everybody's talking about climate change because it affects all of us. So that's a part of development. People are talking about mm -hmm. gender inequality. Oh, it's not just about men. Women should be able to give a chance to education, have the same level of um, pay, wage, um, or salaries. That's development. So yeah. broadly speaking, or specifically speaking, you can say, if you look at the SDGs, there are 17 goals. And these goals have to do with education, energy, partnership, environment, and all of that now. Mm -hmm. Somebody picks some of those goals and focuses on them. Yeah, that's you involved in development. Wow. Uh, and then if you're a consultant in that regard to help people achieve what they want to achieve, it means you're doing um, a consulting job. That means you're an international development consultant. So I'll give you a practical example. Um, many years ago, while I was in Nigeria, about say seven years ago, um, a, a, an organization from the US called to say with my team then, that they would like us to help create awareness for climate change. Nigerians at that level, most people still believe that climate change was a hoax, that it was not yeah. real. Uh, what's happening, Flood? How can you have rainfall in this? It's fake news. Yeah, it's fake. What's climate change? So <laughs> they asked us to 
do that. And so we became consultants to that organization because their own job was to help climate change awareness spread across Africa. So we were going to schools, rural places, and have conferences to lecture young people on what climate change is, and now people can adapt or mitigate the effects. So that's development consulting in the area of climate change. Yeah. Uh, Mentioned I've done works with UNESCO before a couple of times. UNESCO is a major voice in the field of culture and education. So when I work with them, I get stakeholders together from across the world to debate on how to move education forward. Um, and that's a global event that attracts over 170 countries in the world. So when they come out with discuss about that, it's a project that has to do with um, all countries giving their voice to education and creating policies. So I consult on education for them because that's your goal and that's the yeah. problem they solve. And yeah. I could go on and on. So depending on the stakeholder and what they're trying to achieve, um, so I'm able to tilt my expertise to help them carry out that objective. But most of this project, the most important thing to do is because it's, it cuts across many countries, it's international because it's development oriented, oriented, oriented which has to do with different goals, poverty, food security, it's development, and because I help solve the problem, whether it's a conference, create awareness, or help reduce, you know, some level of um, mishaps in, in the region, I'm a consultant. So that makes it in development, development consulting. Okay. I, mean, I hope I was able to. Yeah, it's quite clear, really clear, actually. Um, as so, from what you say, you can you can work in any any department or any sector in the major goal of creating developments in the in the bigger picture not all because we ask them right now to build an oil rig <laughs> you know <laughs> we need petrol to run the world i don't know yeah. how to if you ask yeah. me to help create bridges construction because that's development if you want development to happen people need to create rails connection logistics are important i have no idea how to create rails okay. and you know, all of that so, so i have Parts where I'm focused on, and I'm better so, with them. Yeah. Okay, so maybe development in the human sector. Yeah, so things that has to do with more. Um, yeah, yeah. If say my capital, so if it has to do with helping people move from um, from living a poverty trap, so that could mean women, young people, and also has to do with um, things around agriculture, um, tech, um, um, policies that has to do with poverty eradication or reduction. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, because development is quite broad and not everybody can do everything. So some of the things I do, it's because I'm built to track um, records on them, but I don't do everything. Yeah. 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 Okay. What would you say is the biggest development problem in the world today? Hmm, interesting. Um, I'll, I'll still say education and that's broad. Uh, yeah. Because if you solve, because in the world, when you, when you, when you look at problems with respect to politics um, you know, countries fighting against countries. I mean, if you look at the ongoing things around, um, um, you know, Islam, Islamophobia, um, you know, people are not aware on how to coexist. Um, we also look at things around climate change um, and people, governments also being, they're not taking the necessary steps they should take. I mean, there's a part of education that probably they lack. Um, they're not fully aware. If you look at things around poverty, people are trapped, not because they want to, but they don't have the necessary knowledge to take them to the next level. Even those who even got education, there's another, there's another level where people went to universities in our generation, but now probably what they studied in the university is redundant. Now yeah. today is what they're asking for, you know, digital literacy, data analytics, all of that. And people are wondering, am I losing my job and robots are taking care of the job? So mm -hmm. uh, education in the broad sense, when I look at problems with respect to even how governments work together, how people travel conflicts in Africa, I mean, if you look at what's going on with respect to in, within Nigeria, Cameroon, um, in, in every part is a common denominator. It's that people don't know as much as they should, or people have the wrong kind of education. So when you don't even know how to live with other um, people because of their own religious bias or whatever, there's always a problem, you know, in coexisting and all of that. So at the best drop of everything is information gap. Because some people actually know, but they probably know the wrong thing. It's why you yeah. have people who say, you know, fake news, fake news. Because sometimes even bad news 
friends first and it's fake news and you have it so that anybody can just be an an author you just need to be able to have write quote your blog and even if it's not founded facts so education is a major problem that i see that is common to almost all that we we're going through yeah yeah okay okay um uh nowadays uh well, from for example, from your from your work experience, I when I checked your LinkedIn, I saw so many sets of experiences, so many roles, so many uh, yeah, so many experiences. Did you set out on purpose to that to diversify uh, with those experiences, or it was just something that came to you like, hey, this this is available, I'm gonna try it, or from the onset, did you say? I'm going to try and get as many experiences as possible. Yeah, I think the only thing I set out to do was to, to just make impact. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't want to go for a formal job um, because um, that was back uh, many years in Nigeria after I left um, the university, even though I had a very good degree and I came out tops in my, in my department, in my school. But I, I was just bothered about making impact. So how the impact will be made, whether it's volunteering for an organization, who wants to train farmers on how they can improve their crop yield, um, you know, and use mechanic, um, um, you know, mechanized farming. I was just, well, I was interested. What it has to do with, yeah, organizing competitions between schools. There was a time I did competitions for schools to improve their public speaking prowess for universities. I was interested. Um, at the time, I partnered with the likes of Microsoft and Nokia, you know, um, <laughs> with a couple of friends to create um, a competition and a training for over 13 universities in Nigeria and to give them software to start building the kind of apps that we have today, which has now some of these guys that I that we we trained those years have now become you know startup owners, like company owners doing well in the tech sector. So it was really about I was concerned about two things: young people and their development, so youth development. And so whatever platform I could leverage on to help people, young people develop themselves and lead better lives, become leaders, become more aware of their potentials, I was involved in. And so yeah. probably that opened up many doors in terms of partnerships, organizations who felt we could, they could support what I was doing, both locally um, and regionally in Africa and also internationally. So the more opportunities came, the more I got more exposed to other things. And mm. okay, I think I like, I mean, I didn't plan to go do climate change, but I did what I was doing so much in Nigeria in the youth development space that at the time an organization called on me to say, we want to make you um, an ambassador for Nigeria from the US and you're going to be representing Nigerian African youth at development forums. So that was what even gave rise to me attending um, United Nations Forum, Commonwealth, and became a speaker. And the more I went there, the more I, oh, so there's something called the Millennium Development Goals, MDGs. Oh, there's SDGs. What is this about? Oh, poverty yeah. reduction. I was just making impacts and those things led to you know, other things. Yeah. yeah. So I stumbled on some of these things. Hello? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um were were there any um were there any uh uh I'll say experiences from your work in uh, as an NGO in Nigeria that's working uh, in the NGO sector in Nigeria that has helped you right now? Yes, yes. Um, I, I, I worked with many NGOs. I created a couple of NGOs myself. Um, I co-founded with many people and I also volunteered for many. And so some of the things that have let, have soft skills, you know, respect to communicating properly, stakeholder management, writing grant proposals how do you write how do you convince um, a private sector or an international donor to give money to be able to make the impact you want to make <laughs> all of those things i i didn't go to a formal learning uh, or a classroom block to learn that it was mm -hmm. and it was ounce i mean ants on deck it was getting my hands dirty with working for people who we'll put me on assignments and projects now we want to work with Lagos state government you yeah. and this lady go to this meeting and tell them mm -hmm. what we want to do, convince them to support us. I was yeah. just thrown and then, yeah. And as soon as I travel, you know, and it was unpaid, many of them. But the, I unconsciously, I knew I was learning, but there were some things I didn't even know I'd learned until I had the opportunity to lead greater projects where I'll be paid. And some of those skills just came handy. You knew exactly what kind of communication material to create. 
you knew how to work on 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 slack and all of that you knew how to work with teams across the world at the yeah. time i was managing a project for um, um, um another organization and what they asked me to do was to get africans across in over 30 countries in africa and i was in lagos managed that project for us they, they had not seen me but they asked me to do that so that yeah. I, I can get their voice to be represented at the major platforms as big as the oecd um, they didn't know me. They, they they gave me the job. I did it so well. They gave me a, a certificate to say we endorse you that you're good at what you do. Um, yeah. So all of these things were, were were things I consciously learned by yeah. working with people and by volunteering with people. Okay. Wow. Wow. Nice. That's really yeah. good. Well, from your background, it's clear that you started off in a, a technical background, I would say, and uh, now you're more in the uh, business and entrepreneurship area. Uh, yeah. What was what was the thinking behind that? What was the reason for that switch? Okay, I mean, I'll try and shorten the story. So, I, I had my background in re, um, industrial physics. Yeah, renewable energy to be precise. Because when you're doing physics, um, then you have to. So I did IT and um, and renewable energy as my specifics. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so how did I get into that? Um, I went to on the mandatory um, NYSC, which is National Youth Service Call, um, back in Nigeria, where the government would ask you to go out of your comfort zone to another state to to just um, you know learn a new culture, try to understand what Nigeria is about as a as a country itself. Mm -hmm. So I was transferred from the southwest part, that's from Lagos, far north to Adamawa mm -hmm. State. While in the <laughs> interesting, so I I, I had it opportunity to relocate like most people would rather want to come back to the southwest where things were fast i mean the companies they were you know career prospects but i decided to go on that venture it was that venture that really changed my life okay um i saw a need in that place coming from lagos and i was exposed to all opportunities i saw people were you know years far apart they couldn't stand apart with negotiations or the southwestern folks and with that i created my first i mean my second um, you know, company, um, an agency called Business Management um, Consortium with a couple of friends. And what was the idea? The idea was to help um, core members like ourselves and individuals of the land get entrepreneurship skills. So remember again, I did not plan to go into enterprise. So yeah. I saw a need. I was like, these guys can't get jobs. They don't even know how to write CVs. They have no idea on how to do business. So we started trainings and we're being paid for that. People supported us. We give certificates, we train people. And the impact of that, when I returned back to Lagos after one year, I we now made that bigger. So we now started scaling up to beyond Lagos to other parts of um, Nigeria. And while I was doing that also, uh, so entrepreneurship, I got to know about now people were involved in Lagos, who were young entrepreneurs, but they wanted to be entrepreneurs, but they didn't have the required skills and support they lack finance lack knowledge and so we set up this story to say okay if you don't want to go for a formal job and you want to create your own business in lagos or in nigeria come tell us and the three questions i'm going to ask you is what do you want to do and are you ready to commit to it and um, what do you need and then we'll train you so we were doing that all step i mean consistently helping people and then i got into some fellowships where i was awarded grants um one by the u.s government and also some by other NGOs in Nigeria who were supporting. And before I knew it, I got calls from the Commonwealth, you know, to come and present how entrepreneurship can help African universities to, to begin to chunk out graduates who can create jobs, not look for yeah. jobs. Yeah. So the path is really, so I left physics. I was chasing impact because I just felt, no, there's a need in a country. I dropped my, but right now, I mean, I'm not totally off. I'm not an engineer. I mean, I'm not biting wires you know doing industrial physics <laughs> but um i'm still vested in renewable energy so <laughs> now that i'm doing development work i've consulted on projects that still renewable energy and because of my it focus too i know i did um java programming i did networking um also so when i consult for startups and they talk about tech i'm not lost so i can tell you what data marketing is i can tell you how to code your website to attract more people I can tell you about um, social, you know, SEO, you know, optimization, uh, all of that, search engine optimization, all of yeah. that, because yeah. I have that background. So now I'm not a coder, 
I'm not in, an engineer, but because of my background in that, when I consult with people who have projects in those fields, those background expresses. By the way, as a matter of fact, my final project in the university was a wind turbine. Oh. So I, <laughs> I got everything from the local markets in Nigeria. It's called mm -hmm. Ocean the Markets. I brought a coil and I made um, a prototype to prove that um, you know we don't have, need to have power problems in Nigeria. We can use solar. So I did a wind turbine that converted wind to electricity. Well, of course, it's on a shelf right now, dead somewhere, <laughs> like <laughs> any other people's project. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Whoa, whoa, that's really, really good, really good. You spoke about you. You spoke about starting a business with a friend uh, um, in Nigeria, and uh, we're also going to get later in the talk to friends of Nigeria, and also partnering with a friend to start friends of Nigeria. What exactly is the importance of partnering with friends and people around you and starting lucrative businesses? Because I feel like a lot of uh, Africans need to partner together to come up uh, to develop ideas and also to think about the greater good. And um, I see you, you had that model in your head a long time ago, and uh, which is, I think is more relevant at this time that we are. So, uh, what's the importance of people partnering together, especially Africans in diaspora? Very, very interesting question, um, Victor. And you've actually touched one of, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say a strength or a secret I have. I've never been, I call it, I've never been privileged to work alone. So uh, it's not I deliberately seek out for people to combine my strength with, you know, like they say, if you want to travel fast, you know, you can run alone. But if you want to travel far, you run with people or you run with others. So yeah. um, I've always sought for because one thing I also know is um, I'm limited in my view of how I view things. My I have weaknesses. I have, and if you look at the sustainable development goals, the SDGs, the 17 goals about partnerships, global yeah. partnerships. You need the government stakeholders. You need NGOs. You need private sector. You need the youth. You need the women. Everybody needs to work together to achieve that. So. All through um, every major organization I've created or I've been privileged to create, I've, there's none that has been solely Abiodro Dominic Odunoga as the founder. I've always been a co-founder all my life. And I've probably created, I don't know, um, businesses, maybe over six, over seven private wow. businesses and organizations. And it's been, it's co-founded. I'm still in the business of co-creating. I'm still creating some as we speak. Um, because um, we live in a generation where people are, it's all about I, 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 my, my, my. And yeah. as long as you can't see the big picture and it's, it's you, 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 can, you tend to box yourself. I tell people I'd rather have um, uh, a 1% of a global brand than have a 99% of my own brand that's going nowhere. <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, if you give me 0.00001% of Coca Cola right now, it's better than. You're trying to struggle. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so we live in a nation where people are just to, you know, and go back with themselves. And if you can't be able to, if you are too, um, you know, if you are too limited in your perspective, um, perspective about the ownership structure of things, you want to own things, you want to, you use the word I more often in your speeches, you, you tend to lose much of life. Hmm. You know, and, and nature abhors, you know, vacuum. If you look at life itself, it's all about partnership. The sun, the waters, I mean, that's what it's called in biology. There's the water cycle, you know, that everything is linked. Um, also, as a human body, it's all linked. I mean, the eyes, the nose, the ears, none can do the job of the other. And I that's mean, true. You have a toothache right now. It's so small, but we probably would not have this interview because your tooth will tell you, I don't care that I'm not the leg, I'm not the eyes, but you are not doing this interview. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm important. And that's yeah. what I, I think I knew this right at a very tender age. And it, it's what I always seek for. So even though I seek for partnerships, um, I also seek for right partnerships. It's about mm. that you look into yourself and first understand that um, it is not good for man to be alone. It's just it. it and, mm. you know, God went from, I mean, now going a bit into scriptures because I'm a Christian, you know, um, from it is not good for man to be alone in Genesis. You go into Ecclesiastes, you see, woe to him who is alone costs so it's not just good somebody with the look can be cursed because 
you can't draw things. Facebook will go to a level it can't be, it can't, it can't, it couldn't have gone further if it didn't bring co-founders and partners. Yeah. Tell me of any major establishment that is global. And I'll point to you that it's partnerships that works. I mean, there is no one Alibaba. Um, you're talking about Amazon, eBay, Tesla, Facebook, every one of them. So there's a rhythm in life that tells you it's about co-creation. It's, it's yeah. not isolation. You can't work in isolation. You can't be within your own confines. The world is bigger than you and the world is bigger than what you know. And once you understand that, are you able to understand that people have offered to bring to the table, they have value on board. It helps you to, one, you, you live longer <laughs> because you're not changing too many things. Yeah. You, you, you prolong your life, but most importantly, there's benefits, you know, um, one changes a thousand, two changes 10,000, the, the mathematics in the scripture. So that's what yeah. I believe. And it has helped me. There is absolutely no structure you can point to that I'm part of um, that I initiated and it wasn't with people. It yeah. wasn't, yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, nice, nice. From your experience in business investments, um, what are the basic things that people have to think about when starting a business? What, um, um, yeah, what are the basic things? Because most people, when they want to start a business, they think so far and wide. And yeah, yeah. Uh, but from a but but from a, a professional like yourself, um, I'm sure you thinking, I can do this instead of impossible. So, what are the basic things that people can think about quickly? before they start a business? Uh, well, basic things, um, one is um, find a need. I mean, because some people are just in their own world. They just want to be an entrepreneur for, maybe for the brand, you know, I, I want to be a boss of myself. One is a need, is there a need? If there is a need to be filled, then maybe you have a business case. For instance, um, you wouldn't sell, um, you wouldn't sell, how do they, um, there's this quote that you won't sell ice cream to people in the Arctic or something yeah. <laughs> because they're already cold. Maybe coffee would make sense. So you want to ask yourself, yeah. what need have I found? So it starts with a need because entrepreneurship itself is about meeting a need. Yeah. And it's not about, I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to start selling shoes. I want to start making African bags. Is there a need for African bag in that space? Uh, do you have potential? Because if you're not solving a problem, then you shouldn't even get. So it's really not about now you creating a problem. What I see some people do is they create a problem that, that doesn't even exist. And they're now <laughs> also trying, because don't create, there are already problems. People have problems with education, literacy, some are looking for jobs or career. I mean, it's about Facebook is solving a problem. I am not connected to my friends from primary school. I would have never known the address because they were in mobile phones when I was in the primary school. Yeah. Now, Facebook solved that problem of networking. I really don't have to travel to the US to chat with my friends because there's WhatsApp. That's a problem. So it starts with a problem first, the yeah. basic need. The other one is, do I have the ability to meet this need? Uh, it's not to say, because I've seen people you know, develop great dreams. I, I want to... Um, I want to. I want to build a bridge. I want to solve. I mean, where where do you want to start? You want to compete with Total or Slum BJ or Lafarge? I mean, you must be. It was better. Yeah, I mean, it was better. Facebook had a need. People wanted to interact. Wanted to solve a problem in the school. He was. He could code. Steve Jobs could code, because you don't want to have a problem that you found, and then you're now looking for how will I solve. Now, I might not really have the skills, also direct skills, but can I get the people can do it and maybe also reward them because. As a part of, I might not be able to do, but I'm rich enough to pay people to work for me. But if you're starting yeah. off, it's, do I have the skills? Um, do I have, have I found a need? And do I have the resources to yeah. meet that need? And the resources could mean time resources because some of the business ideas you have probably just need time. There are people who are stuck in an eight to five job. They want to sell, they want to do business, but people call you at 2 p.m. You will not even pick the call because you're stuck in another job. So you have the business, but you don't have the time. And maybe that's why you now need co-founders. to say, okay, I can be in my eight to five job. Let me get somebody and we can share and have equity. You take 40%, I take 60% because it's my idea. I don't have the time. You have the time and the knowledge, but I can share this with you and we share profit. That's where collaboration comes in, you know? So if you don't have the resources, you're not thinking, how do I leverage on other people's resources, OPR, 
other people's money, OPM. And when you want other people's money also, you also probably have to tell them what is the need for them. Okay, yeah. so not if it's not a grant, even for grants, people want something from you. It might be the impact. They, nobody gives money for free. Okay, so it's more like you have to be able to put them in your mind and give them a value proposition. So you start with a need. Um, don't 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 go and create a problem where it doesn't exist. Um, for instance, if you're studying in Nigeria right now, nuclear nuclear space physics. I really don't know how you work in Nigeria. I still saw that China launched a space whatever a few days ago yesterday, and they've set a goal. They want to just get some lunar rocks from the US. I mean, from the moon to from be the moon. The third, to be the third country that will do that, aside to you, um, US and um, the, and Russia. Russia. So. And they now have a goal that for in the next 15 to 20 years, we are going to now go to the moon itself and have our base there. It's a goal. And they have the investment. Hmm. And if you tell President of Nigeria right now that we want to go to space, it's tell you, do you know how, how many people don't have houses on land? Exactly. <laughs> Can we, what are we going to space to do? I mean, do you know people have, don't have three square meals? So you want yeah. to be real, don't, maybe you need to leave Nigeria and then go and work with NASA. Uh, where, mm. they, where they where they are bothered about space and probably find Elon Musk to partner yeah. with, but yeah. you know you have to be realistic. I mean, you want to do so. Some courses we're studying, you know, have to check the relevance of those things in in the context of where you are and where you plan to build that business. Don't yeah. just create a business out of your own. I've seen people who are passionate, but they end up being broke hmm. because it's not your passion that will get people to buy from you. It's that you're solving a problem. I'm 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 going to I'm on Zoom. Because Zoom is solving a problem that I feel WhatsApp will not solve, or maybe Google Hangouts will not solve. You can yeah. record on Google Meet or something. They have yeah. features that you can do. They have registration. That's why yeah. we're on Zoom. They have, so if you're going to create a new whatever, you, there are many things available. Why should people, the question of why, why are you doing it? Why should people put, I mean, patronize you? When you yes. have all the why, do I have the skills to do this? Do you have the resources? Then it, it it makes it easier, and then um, which leads to the most important thing, you know, feasibility plan. You want to ask yourself, who are those in the service? Um, um, SWOT analysis. What's my strength? What's my weakness? Are there opportunities for this thing here in France, in Africa? And then the threats. What are the threats? Will one policy just eradicate all of what I'm doing? I know startups who had ideas, but because of COVID, they went, you know, off completely because their product demands that people travel. Hmm. If people don't travel, that's what their service was built around. So as we yeah. speak, throughout this year, no sale has been made because people must travel if yeah. they... So you want to ask some other threats. What, what if, if COVID lasts till, you know, now we have a vaccine, but there are many externalities you want to, and that's what a feasibility plan will do for you, a business development plan, or, you know, a SWOT analysis for your idea. And it's that basic, you know, to see if you are really in a business. Okay, so a short recap. You need, you have, there, there has to be a need. You have to have the skill and yes. you have to be able to access resources. Those three things are- Well captured, well captured. Think about <laughs> starting a business. Thank well you. Captured. Thank you. Um, there are a lot of young people. There are, um, sorry. There are a lot of young people who, um, uh, who think about starting a business. Yeah. Um, but how can we encourage young people to start businesses? Because they always think about like, yeah, this is not possible. They always think about the can'ts. I can't do this. I can't do it. But I think the more we encourage young people to start businesses, yeah. the better. So how do we encourage young people to start businesses? Uh, uh, you know, it's as basic as start where you are, you know, so um you have schools um because i tell people if you have a, an idea and your friends in school um your church members um people in the mosque um families can't see a need for that you know those are your first immediate markets test them with the product or the value um ask if you if, for instance you want to go into singing people get paid for singing because it's a business also if you sing at concerts if already you sing and everybody around you tells you, sorry, we need earphones to plug our ears from. We can't afford to hear you all over your friends. Why? Are you? So mm -hmm. test, test the markets, test people. Offer free stuff. If you're a breaker, ask people for, you know, do free samples. Give to your friends and say, I'm inviting you over. I mean, or whatever, or your church or your neighborhood, your community. 
um, samples test my cake, you know, what do you think about it? They like it, they'll come back to pay for more. So yeah. it's as simple as, you know, that's what they call prototyping. So to yeah. encourage people, once they've done the three things we've said, you know, find a need, whatever, now do a prototype. Don't go all out. Don't go and start big. Um, because if you don't, if you go up, you can fall down. But if you grow up, you stay up. So mm. I'll say that again. If you go up, you can fall down. down. <laughs> if you go up, you can fall down. If you grow up, you stay up. Yeah. So it's about growth. And most people, you know, negate the growth process. It's important to grow. Don't rush. Gain traction. Gain mileage. You know, don't just rush into things. So test the markets. Ask them for feedback. If you're a public speaker, do a Zoom meeting. Tell 10 persons, I want to tell you how to, how to ha achieve your goals in 2021. And ask them that for the 30 minutes, did that, did that make sense? Let them give you feedback. Don't go and do a flyer and say, I'm a public speaker, I want to help you. What have you, I mean, what's your pedigree? What have you done in the past? You know, hmm. what's your, what are your testimonials? So people just get to be carried away by influencers on social media, which doesn't, you know, and they get to see great people and they don't know, you know, Jack Ma said something I like, Jack Ma, Alibaba founder, and he said, I advise young people not to learn from success, but from failures. Hmm. Everybody you see who has succeeded has failures. So but what we see, Dango Tate, there are more success stories about Dango Tate than his failures. But the truth is that you need to fail and it's better to fail when you're not in the limelight. So, I mean, test the product, let it fail. You know, start where you are, sell. If, it's, if you can sing, sing now. If you can, if you want to be an author, write now, do a sample, do a blog. Let's tell you about whether what you've written makes sense. Don't just go and write a false book when even you write an article and nobody wants to ever go to your Facebook page again. If you are a baker, bake now. If you if you're into if you want to be a chef, make few, you know, um, few new, you know, dairy, whatever, products or whatever. Ask people to test products. Let them taste. Uh, if you are a startup and you have a technology, or whatever, create a mini web portal or whatever. Ask people that does this solve your problem? Would you pay for this if I allow you to pay? All of that. So it's it's about start where you are. Don't be too futuristic. Um, there's a part of the scriptures I also like that says the full set is eyes in the future. Everybody's always thinking 10 years plan, 20 years plan. But what gets you to 10 years plan is what you do every day. You know, it's not hmm. about 10 years. Plan. If you don't do well in 2021, 2022, 2023. 2030 will not make sense. It is the accumulation of nine years that makes your 10th year make sense. Yeah. yeah. People just want to create and it's so the more important question is what can you do now? Start yeah. it now. If you can yeah. speak, speak now. I mean, look at what you're doing. You're not waiting for to have a YouTube, I mean a TEDx platform for one million people. <laughs> That's so you're already in that. So tomorrow somebody sees a Victor, a Cabo, and you're interviewing. I don't know, Richard Branson tomorrow, tomorrow maybe Tony Lumelu, and they wonder, oh, this guy is so lucky. See, I just, I mean, they didn't see the days of trying to get people to like what you're doing and to, that's consistency. Yeah. You're doing yeah. what you can do now with the resources you have. And yeah. tomorrow, I won't be surprised if you have to interview the vice president of Nigeria or a top Nigerian, and I wouldn't be surprised because I, I know there was, a, <laughs> <laughs> there was a track record. So that's yes. what people don't do. And that's why people need to, you know, not, young people don't be too, you know, be be passionate, um, but be also be realistic, which realistic. all you have is today. So the question yes. is, what can you do today and what are you doing now? Don't leave that book for next year. Write a chapter, write something, ask people for feedback. Start now. And if I was waiting to be endorsed by United Nations before, you can't have it go to work in United Nations. What helps you work in United Nations is that village you've not worked in. You, 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 you undermine working in a rural village doing community projects. You just want to leave Kinshasa or you want to leave Lagos and then go straight to Geneva. I mean, what's no. your story? What's your story? No. Make the impact now. Do community outreach where you are. You know, solve a problem in outreach. Do something in Rome, Italy. Do something in Paris. Let all of those, there are many NGOs that know you in, but those things give you leverage to be able to have testimonials that when you get to United Nations, one, you won't blow the opportunity. Because success that also happens too fast is a curse. Yeah. Success yeah. not prepared for it's a curse. So why why are you yeah. rushing to be successful when your character and your skills cannot help you maintain? And in yeah. the world, that's what we call sustainability. It's not mm -hmm. even about being successful anymore. People are talking about 
sustain success. Can you sustain success when it comes? Yeah, that's what you talked about. Grow up, not go up. Exactly. Because <laughs> grow, growing up is slow and steady, and yeah. it creates character. It creates attitude. Very true. Growing up is quick, and Very you get a lot of things by the side. Very true. Very true. Wow. On the side notes, how was it meeting the French president? <laughs> Well, yeah, well, I didn't know I was taller than him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, well, well, I was surprised, you know. Yeah, but I think I've met him now maybe in meetings, maybe thrice. So it wasn't just once. Yeah. After that, like twice different meetings. Um, yeah, but it was, it, was, it was a very good idea. Um, I connected with him on different levels. Um, number one, it was a young person. He broke, okay. you know, the glass ceiling, being a, the youngest president, you know, in France. And mm -hmm. one of the youngest rulers in the world, president. Other than that, also we also went to the same um, university where I did my master's degree. He's also an alumnus of that same school, Sciences Po, Paris. Okay. So, so we had that, and then number two, he had his internship in Nigeria at the time, um, while he was working with the French diplomatic, um, you know, um, government, the, the diplomats, um, the French government in, in yeah. Nigeria. So he yeah. worked. So. When we met and we spoke, we had many things to talk about. He loves tech, he loved young people and startups. So we had common, you know, and it was easy to, but it was, it was, it was a great thing to see somebody you admire and you respect as a young leader and with an inspiration to many people, not just in France, but across the world. And, yeah. uh, you know, to be in the same room and have the opportunity for a tete a tete, you know, with him. Yeah. For me, that was, it was, it was, it's not a memory I'll forget very soon. Yes. <laughs> nice. Easily, yeah. Did you speak in English or French? The two, the two. Oh, really? <laughs> we started in English and then we moved to French. And it was okay. Good. Yeah. Oh, great, great, nice. That's a, that's something that is really amazing to to see that, yeah, that your work is taking you to places, it's taking you to places that you can actually make true impact and in the lives of people all around. Yeah, yeah. that's really nice. Um, could you please tell a bit about the Friends of Nigeria? What is your current goal and what are the plans with Friends of Nigeria? Um, thank you. So Friends of Nigeria is um, a diaspora organization created by some other friends, Nigerians. So I have co-founders and um, the mission is simple. It's to one, um, unless the diaspora in Europe. So it's called Friends of Nigeria Europe because we're focusing on the European continent. And so we have three levels of membership. Um, we have um, students who are Nigerians based um, in Europe or in France. Um, we also have professionals, people working with multinationals or private companies. And we have the third category of members, entrepreneurs, successful Nigerians, um, entrepreneurs based in Europe, in France and across Europe. Um, and the other part, what we do, aside giving back to Nigeria, we do developmental projects. We raise money front to help support projects back at home. Yeah. But we've built a team so strong and the structure so strong that right now, um, we serve somewhat to complement other agencies as a bridge between France and Nigeria when it comes to trade and investments. So as I speak to you, we've had trade missions where we've taken French investors to Nigeria to do business. And we've also brought Nigerian stakeholders from public and private sector to come to France to make deals happen. Um, we do an annual event called Spotlight Nigeria. Um, it's a marketplace where we bring top CEOs and top um, you know, major voices um, to come to France for two days in Paris, and they have an exchange with their French counterparts. And this we've done in the, I mean, the coming weeks, actually we're expanding across Europe. So we're gonna be setting up the same structure across different European countries. We have members already in Switzerland, in Italy, um, some in Netherlands also, uh, uh, some of these countries. So now we've gotten um, to level where we now want to expand and have um, formal structures in these countries. Um, but so far, it's been amazing to, to for it. I, I mean, when you see Nigerians abroad, um, you know, sometimes the narrative online or what you see from the external stakeholders are things that you probably would make you ashamed. Um, but mm. we, we have people say that there's more to Nigeria than what the media, you know, might show to you. We yeah. have Nigerians in France who, who are not just stable, but some of them make nothing less than 10 million euros annually. And when you mm. get to their companies, you don't even see a black person. You don't even see Nigerian. It's all white. So they are contributing to, you know, the economic prowess of the countries where they are based. You have Nigerians that own automobile 
um, companies in the energy sector doing so well, amazing well. And yeah, man, these are the kind of people we, we have in our network and we let people know, I mean, even though we, are, we have Nigerians in diaspora, but um, beyond that, they contribute to the countries. They, they're not just a burden, they're an asset to the countries. They're, you know, and so our vision is to bring this diaspora process together and also be a voice and critically contribute to Nigerians' development um, across different sectors, whether it's in education, in policy and governance, but more, you know, more to, you know, to ensure that um, there is that trans, um, there's that communication between, um, because some Nigerians are here, they've not been home for the past 30 years, 20 years. That's they, true. They are, yeah, so we, we see it as, you know, rather than, you know, change the narration, you know, the brain drain. <laughs> now, how do we help with the brain gain? All of your exposure and skills, you can leverage on us and give back to the country. And we work with different stakeholders to achieve that. We work with Nigerian government agencies such as Midcom, Nigerian um, in Diaspora Commission. We work with NIPC, Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, NEPC, and also different chambers of commerce, NGOs. Um, so back in Nigeria, and also in France, we work at the highest level. You know, we have support from the Embassy of Nigeria, from the French Chamber of Commerce, from different establishments, and also from the group created by President Macron, um, the French Presidential Council. Also, we we also partner with them. So um, the, the future, I mean, the, the vision is clear. Um, get Nigerians to contribute back to national development, but more importantly, unless, you know, more diaspora members to ensure that we give capacity to, by the way, we have a webinar coming up, for instance, in two days time, and this webinar is to expose job opportunities in Europe to Nigerians all across Europe. <laughs> Our desire is to have, because once you empower Nigerians and diaspora, um, even though it's one person, but there's a ripple effect. When diaspora is strengthened, um, they can give more. Um, it's yeah. those who have blood that can donate blood. <laughs> so don't ask them, give back at home. Also help them to build capacity so that yeah. they can give back. So we do it both ways. The ones who are already fine, we try to help them, you know, give back at home. And the ones who are trying to get their foot in, whether looking for internships or jobs or start their business, we have this sort of structure that helps them do that well in France and across the diaspora. Yeah. Great, great. And how can people get in touch? How can people um, reach out or join uh, the movements and uh, the Friends of Nigeria? How can people do that? Yeah, it's simple. I mean, our, our web, website is friendsofnigeria.net. Friendsofnigeria.net. And once together, you see, you can you know fill um, a form that allows you to be a member. And once you be a member, somebody will be in touch with you. And you can also follow us on social media. And once you you know, you follow our activities, it's very easier for you to be connected and you understand what we're doing. And you get, you know, periodical news, newsletters from us. Um, we are very active on LinkedIn. Um, we have a YouTube page, we have a Facebook page and a Twitter page. So all of that you'll find on friendsofnigeria.net. Our projects, our activities, the members, the founding members, our honorary board, you can add that on our website and um, we'll be happy to, you know, to get to work with people who share the same values that we we all dear to our hearts amazing amazing do you have any last words for people who are uh, yeah who might want to follow in your parts or who would like to yeah start a business or really connect with people uh all around of course africans but also europeans also do you have any word word for them any advice piece of advice for young people because the major audience that we have on uh, this platform are mostly people between the ages of 20 to 30. Uh, some, of course, goes higher, but the core group is 20 to 30. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think now that you've made it simple for me, 20 to 30, so um, I, I, I think one thing I found out on time for my life was understanding what I wanted to do in life. Um, I, um, I, wanted, I knew exactly what I was going after. But if you see along my path, I'd actually translate into other things. And the reason why I was able to translate and to go into other parts was because I knew what wasn't working for me at a early age. I knew what worked and I was able to drop some distractions. So I'm going to advise people um, in your early 20s, um, you have nothing to lose. You know, <laughs> try out things, volunteer, seek new experience, um, ask people if you can help them with something, try task. Um, you might end up not even working with what you studied in school, but you need to be able to adapt on time. So look at the times and seasons, get to have mentors. Uh, I didn't talk about that, but mentors have played a very major role in my life. 
I have mentor in almost every part of my life, um, entrepreneurship, development. There are mentors I have who work with international firms who sometimes offer me advice and also give me opportunities. So the okay. place of mentorship cannot be downplayed. They help you, you know, navigate. You don't need to learn everything by yourself. There are some things you have to learn. There are some things you just need to be able to just, one advice will save you three years of trial. I've mm. worked on different startups. I know what works, what fails. So sometimes you ask me, um, and that's what consulting is about, you know, because you've, you've been, you've had many experiences. I'm going to advise that, you know, once start out on time, don't be too bothered about will I fail or not? If you fail, you have the time to correct. So it's not really about, and failure itself is not final. Like there's a book about failure is not final. It's, it's a means to an end. Failure helps you know what doesn't work and then you can move to other things. And even in experiences where you failed, you've learned things that would help you to achieve success in other phases of your life. So I'm gonna say, don't be too futuristic. Um, I know five years plan is fine. 10 years plan will be bothered about what you're doing today to help you achieve those goals. So try, fail fast if you can, <laughs> so I can learn to succeed very well. Seek mentors, what you have to do, do it now. You know, today is that right day. Today is the day, not tomorrow. Today is the gift, today is the present. Um, do it now, you know, don't procrastinate, start now. That idea, talk, that mentor you've always tried to say, I'll talk to them on, on LinkedIn, send that message today. Um, I will start learning French, learn today, you know, just yes. take a step. And once yeah. you take that step, you never know what is, you know, what follows after, which is what my story has been. I, some of those things I've evolved in, they were not planned. <laughs> I stumbled on them, but I stumbled because I was moving. Yeah, you won't stumble into success if you are stands, if you are stay put. While you're moving, then yeah, you probably stumble into things. So um, progress is important. Motion is important. By all means, you know, like somebody said, whether you want to crawl, crawl. Whether you want to fly, fly. Whether you want to run, run. Whether you want to jump, jump. By all means, keep moving. If you fail, pick up yourself again. Try something else. Talk to people. And I think, yeah. I mean, in the next few years, you probably, uh, yeah, you'll be the ones who will be, you will be celebrating. <laughs> Amen. 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 So from what you said, I really like the Nike motto. The Nike motto means says just do it. Just do it. Just just do it. Just do it. And <laughs> also um, you always have to be ready to make use of, of opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Be ready to take advantage of every opportunity. So opportunities might not come, but you should always have an eye out for when the opportunity gives itself. Don't waste time, just go for it. Don't miss moments. I some of the things that happened in my life with opportunities I didn't miss. I was in an event or maybe in an airport. I you saw a major a major public figure. Don't, should I go? Don't be hesitant. When that thing could be a defining moment, just go introduce yourself. I mean, I've known people have missed chances. You know, ah, that's Bill Gates. Should I? Should I? I mean, don't you have nothing to lose? The worst you can hear is a no. I mean, just shoot your shots. You know, yeah. just yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> A no is so much better than not knowing if it was if it, if it could have been a yes or a no. Oh uh, no, that regrets. Yeah, you don't want to live with that regret. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. It's been I think it's been an, an hour. It's been an amazing, informative session with you. I uh, thank you for the time uh taking out to uh, have this talk and this discussion. Yeah. I must say, I'm, 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 I'm proud of what you do too. Um, um, you're one of probably, I, I met you, I mean, a few years ago in a youth camp and yeah, yeah. you came across as somebody yeah, who, you know, who had substance. And so I, I'm, I'm proud of what you do. And I know this is just a list. It's always to get better. I'm definitely, I'm committed to, to seeing how to support to make this grow. Um, I believe in the Cabo. I believe in the vision. And I think, yeah, it's, it's going places. So I want to say kudos to you and the team. Uh, thank yeah, you. I just want this to be on record that I believe in this and I know it's going places. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I mean, like you said, mentorship, it's really easy for, for young people like, like me to see people like you who are um, doing it, who have done it and who are looking for greater steps. I've, I've listened to you so many times on uh, symposiums and lectures and uh, whenever I listen to you, there's always something to take back home. And so once you have people who you can look up to and who you can 
um, learn from, it makes the journey and it makes the job way, way, way easier. Yeah, indeed. A, a, a foolish person learns from his mistakes, but a smart person learns from the mistakes of others. Oh yeah, oh yeah, indeed. So, indeed. yeah. Indeed. So that's why this platform is here, so people can learn from from uh, lessons and experiences of people, so they so they have an easier time. In, indeed, indeed. Well done, well done. Happy Thank you so much. Contribution today. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, yes. Nice talking with you. Thanks, Victor. Thank you so much. Bye bye. All right, bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you would like to send a message, view more content, check our description box below for all our socials and websites. Till we meet again. Bye.